podcast and myself, Daps. No Lamin, no Spence, but we've got, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can already see that there's someone there next to us, um, no next to me. Keep liking, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff. YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify. No, not really SoundCloud, actually. I'm putting it on SoundCloud now just because no one listens to it on that. But um, yeah, guys, 99th episode. We've got a special guest. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see that we're not in the usual studio that we do this in. Um, I've come all the way to Port Vale. And um, I've got a special, special guest with me today. Um, Port Vale Central... Central defender, centre half. Um, Leon Leg. How you doing? Is that you? No, it's Le- it is Leg. Leg, yeah, Leg, yeah. Does anyone ever say Leon Leggy? Do you know what? I get a few business calls. I've had, <laughs> I've had, I've had Leggy. Leggy. I've had Ledge. I don't mind a Ledge one, yeah, but yeah, uh, Leg, yeah. How you doing, man? All good, all good. Uh, um, so, like I said, you play for Port Vale. We're here in your, at your stadium and impressive, man. Yes, it's um, quite big. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. It even looks. That must be a blow out there. It's a big, well, it's one of the biggest um, pitches in the league. It so, got to be, got to be fit for that. And we've got a decent home, got home record this season. So, um, yeah, I think we've got a good fit team and had a few decent results out there. Yeah, have you got a striker that likes to run channels? Pope, does he run channels? Uh, no, <laughs> not anymore. He used to in his younger days, but um, <laughs> got some quick winners that uh, like to exploit the. The, the spacing behind. Mm. How's the um, season going? Very good. Um, 11 games left and currently 7th, I think we are. 7th yeah. or 8th at the moment. Two points off, maybe? We're level on, a, level on points with two other teams and um, yeah, we we win our next game and hopefully the results go, go for us. We back in the playoffs. Listen, don't come and do media, you know. I, I feel like yeah. your, whole, <laughs> <laughs> your whole thing has just, just changed. Um, but um, at the beginning of the season, the club's aspirations was it actually playoffs promotion? It was more considering how last season was. Well, last season um, wasn't the best. We it was a up and down. Uh, we we got sucked into a bit of a, a relegation battle, mm. but um, there was a lot of things that were going on the behind the scenes, and we had a takeover this year. Mm. And I suppose that what was said at the start of the season for us were the. the the chairman and the well, chairwoman and the the manager, new manager, was basically no fear, go out and test yourself against the the, the, the other teams in this league, and you know see what happens. And I think we've taken everything game by game and managed to get where we are. What's been your toughest game in the league so far this this year? Is there one game that sticks out where you're like, you know what, that was a bit of a a bit of a mad one? It was a Bradford away. Um, he said that as well. Talking to um, Noobs, well, he said that as well. Back yeah, the their place because um, they get quite a big following. Ours was a Tuesday night, and we, bearing in mind as well, we was trying to get a um, first way win of the season, mm. and it we went one nil up, and then they got a penalty for. If you look back, at it, it wasn't a penalty, mm. so we've, it was right near the death. It was like 44, 44th minute, so mm. we've gone into. Um, Half time one or when we know we should have been one up, and then um, uh, Will Atkinson scored with a few minutes ago to make it 2 1. And mm. I think he used to play for them as well, yeah. So, which was quite nice for us and nice for him to score a winner, and then sort of set us, set us on our way, really. And um, I think it was a well deserved 2 mm. 1 victory. This is your second season here, right? Second season, yeah. Um, Gonna be a third, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. In, I've been talks with, with a, a new deal, hopefully. Um, but yeah, enjoying it, enjoying it here. Okay, cool. Um, so with that, because obviously last year, no, not last year, yeah, last year, you weren't playing. I think you mentioned you there, was, there was a spell when you weren't playing. And um, you came from playing that regular. So w- was there a point when you were like, you know what, I should have come here? Yeah, and in my mind, um, there was... It's around about January time when the things that were going on, and I just thought, you know what, maybe I've made a mistake. Mm. Um, but then the new manager come in and sort of bring a, a breath of, it was like a breath of fresh air, really. And uh, we, we were playing much better football. Mm. Uh, and once I got my chance, 
stuck at him, kept, kept my spot, and stayed in there for the rest of the season. What's what's the new manager actually brought in? Like, what's different with him? I know, I know fear attitude, I suppose. Mm. He, he, he's kind of instilled into us that you shouldn't be scared of anyone in this league. Mm. Um, you know, and I think that shows with the teams that we've beat this year. Um, a lot of our victories have been against teams that are at the start of the season, odds on to be up there in the top seven and, and fight for promotion. Whereas for us, we were predicted to come something like 19th, 20th or something. So, yeah. Um, we've, we've had some big wins against the likes of Swindon, um, Colchester the other week with 3-0, um, like I said, Bradford. Mm. So we've um, had some good results against some big When teams. you look at the table, has it kind of panned out how you thought, or are there one or two surprises up there that you thought, oh, actually? Um, I don't think anyone would have seen us being up there. Um, I, I think it's only now that teams are noticing us in the oh, first league. When I looked at the table, coming up here. I was expecting to scroll <laughs> down the table. <laughs> <laughs> and when I saw where you lot were now, I was like, what? Because I remember last I knew of, of Port Vale, you lot were struggling. Yeah. But that was like, obviously... Um, I mean, nice, yeah. So when I was like, oh, wow, you lot are actually doing all right. Yeah. Um, like I say, since we've... So we were tent for about three months. Mm. <laughs> there was a time where we just didn't move position. We, mm. we stayed tent for like, it literally, I think it was like nearly 90 days yeah. where we just stayed in that position. But we were still, there was only sort of two or three points separating us from the, um, the playoff position. So as long as you stayed in and around it for, mm. for a little while, and obviously now there's a stretch of 11 games now, we've, we've got a chance of, of, of staying in there. Um, it's it's going to be a, a, a big ask, but I think we can do it. Yeah, no, hundred percent. You can, you can definitely do it. But <clears throat> also, while we're here talking about Port Vale, can't not talk about the Man City match. What was that like going, <coughs> like going into that match for you, in terms of like the media? Media must have been crazy. Ah, oh, do you know what? It was crazy from when the it first got pulled out the hat. Yeah, and I remember, <laughs> I forgot to watch. The, the, the whole draw mm. I thought it was I think it was at 7 and I thought it was at 8 for some reason mm. so I'm cooking dinner and then he cook? yeah a little what's, bit what's, what's your special? ah no it's anything really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say yeah, it's special <laughs> uh, I could cook Nigerian food my wife taught me how to cook Nigerian food you got Nigerian where? Yeah, she's her family is Nigerian, so I've got hey, Nigerian for this guy. So. He's a solid guy, man. Yeah, man. so. He makes, he makes good decisions. <laughs> good decisions. <laughs> but yeah, I was. Um, I got a phone call from from my in law, my mother in law. I said, she screamed down the phone, Man City, Man City. Like, what? <laughs> I said, hold on. Turn the TV on, and it's pulled out. I'm like, oh my word. And then the whole sort of family yeah. on the phone. Like, oh, yeah, that's it. We're coming, we're coming. Yeah. End up getting, I think it was like 35 tickets or something. Like really? 35 people from the family, yeah, end up coming. Friends were coming. Yeah, it was madness. And the obviously leading up to that sort of week before, you had all the press and all that sort of talking about this, this big game. But then the morning of the game, I'm like, wow, okay, I'm playing against some big players today. Yeah. It's is that when it hits literally the morning? It does. It does. Um, Did you try to watch like some of the games before? I think, but it's, yeah, it's kind of. Pointless. But it, what can you do? Yeah, I mean, these pointless. are world class players. You know, you got Aguero in there. You got Mares. You got all these players that you watch on match today each week. Mm. And you're, you know, little old me in League Two thinking, right, I've got to try and do something to stop these. Yeah. Um, but no, it was a great experience. Um, I still remember sort of running out of the tunnel um, for for the warm up mm. and we look right, and you got eight thousand of our fans all yeah. sitting up there, and just the roar. Yeah, we come that's out. a good um, a good away following there. Yeah, they wanted more. Oh, really? They wanted more. Yeah, they wanted to get more tickets. I I even heard that there were um, away fans going into the home end. Mm. A couple, I think, got actually got chucked out, but. Um, yeah, they, they got in with the, the Manchester City and I've, I I can easily say that we outsung theirs. Yeah. And they, I think there was 50,000 on that day. It's not difficult. It's, yeah. well, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, who in that match yet? Yeah, because obviously everyone will watch, will 
who looks at Man City you knows they've got quality players. But who in that match would you look at and think, unreal? Aguero. Aguero. Did Aguero, you... he, he, if any striker is watching someone like that, mm. just look at some of his movement. He, there were times where he looks like he's not doing much, mm. but you know in his head, right, he's yeah, waiting yeah. for that he's moment. Played, yeah. Because he's walking around, walking around, having a little stroll, and then he just comes alive. He's so sharp. And I'm thinking that, I, during the whole 90 minutes, I'm thinking, I'm Mark Aguero, so <laughs> I've got to switch on even more, you know. And then he just comes alive. And as soon as he gets around the 18-yard box, it's, that's it. It's yeah. a joke. He, he moves there, comes back again. And it's like a, trying to catch a wasp. It's just, it's, yeah. It's it just, must be a blow as well, man. Bad. Yeah, I, I can safely say that after that game, I was knackered. I got a good night's sleep after that game. Yeah, I, I, I bet you did, man. I bet you did. Because it must be so quick. Obviously, you're used to the pace of the game in League Two. Yeah. Premier League is is different. I, you did well to actually just finish a game. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, like I say, League Two compared to Premier League, uh, it's a lot different. I think, you know, the, the quality they have on the ball, you're just seeing the touches. I, I can't remember a player sort of miscontrolling a ball. They ain't got worrying no bubbles or anything like that. Yeah. It's just every touch was perfect. Did you ever look and think to yourself, oh, "I should play Man City"? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When the, when it sort of had a little bit of a break in play, yeah. you think, and you're looking around and look at some of the players, you're thinking, "Is this even real?" Mm. Like so, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a little bit surreal, but it was a, a proud moment to be playing against some of these players. Did you get anyone's shirt after? I, you know what, I made sure that the closer it got to near the end of the game, <laughs> I was close to Aguero, yeah. And then as soon, I didn't let him out, I was like, yeah. honestly, I got his shirt, and he's like, yeah, yeah, come in a minute. I said, no, 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 <laughs> you ain't know I'm coming. And in the end, about three or four minutes later, yeah. he gave me his shirt, so I you got did, that. Did you give him yours or did you? Was... Nah, he didn't <laughs> forget about me. He... <laughs> Are you not allowed to give out your, uh, to give your uh, shirt? Sorry? You could do, but I don't think he really wanted to mind. But with all the lads, to be fair, they, um, when we went back into the changing rooms, I think um, the 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 man their manager let us go into their changing room, see mm. their players, and yeah, that. so yeah. a lot of lot of lads have got shirts, got their signed. I got mine signed by most of the squad, and that, and mm. uh, it's ready to be sort of hung up on the wall. But um, yeah, we met their players and staff and everything, and yeah, it was very hospitable. Did they um, were they hospitable towards um, the, the big man up top? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's um, I don't know if you've seen this on Twitter. So, um, Mendy actually stayed behind uh, to get a photo of him. Oh, I saw that. Him. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I stuck it, it in the WhatsApp group. Yeah, uh, and then when we went into their changing room, Popey being Popey because he's a bit of a lad. <laughs> He tried to, because it was, it was all in good nature. It wasn't like anything harmful what he said. He was just basically, just you know, back, it was. A back, basic backstory for people who don't know what we're talking about. He's put out a tweet, um, not Nick Pope, Tom, Tom Pope. Tom Pope. He's put out a tweet saying he basically scored goals against John, John Stones or whatever. So now, and he did that tweet ages ago, didn't it? It was a good three or four months before. Yeah, he did ages ago. Yeah. Obviously, it's come out and everyone's been talking about it. But then he goes and scores. Yeah. <laughs> so that makes it worse. <laughs> uh, he must have been in that group. Or well, know. apparently, they, the whole team, about for two weeks, were on him in training, on, on John Stones for oh. a bit. Like, just sort of <clears throat> getting on him a bit. And he must have, um, it, it, he mm. must have got like, pelters for a bit. Yeah. So he's... Um, Anyway, we've gone into uh, into the changing room. Popey's sort of walked in like like a boy, <laughs> bit, just think of uh, McGregor walked yeah, his yeah, little, yeah. yeah, like that. <laughs> Come on, Stones, yeah, 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 and then all their lads. <laughs> but I don't think he took it too well. He stones. No, nah, he didn't take it too well. <laughs> his head must uh, be gone. Yeah, because he got twenty of his teammates sort of been taking the mick out of him. He Popey's come walking and. Like Conor McGregor, yeah, and then, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was um, it was yeah, it was funny. It was a funny moment. What's yeah. he like, um, Pope around the um, around the place? Is he a character? He is a character. Yeah, he um, he likes to laugh and joke. He mm. he likes to 
got it's got a different banner, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he he likes to yeah, he's a he can be a lover by. Okay, cool. Uh, so where did it all start for you? Because you're obviously now everyone sees you now at Port Vale, but it started from you started in non league, right? Yeah, non league. What yeah. was your first um club? Uh, a team called Little Common, Little Common. back home in um, East Sussex. Uh, I played all through their youth team from under nines up to under sixteens. Mm. And when I was in the under sixteens, uh, I I was asked to play for the first team, mm. which was like county league or something like that. So, yeah. but yeah, you know, I, I, at that time I just wanted to play football. So it was playing in, uh, fifteen years old playing against big men, mm. and it was good test for me really. Were you um, a centre half? No, on Sundays playing for the, the youth team I was actually a uh, centre mid oh, and wow. then because I could head a ball when I'd like to tackle their manager basically said I'm, I'm going to put you at the back mm. and at the time I was like oh, I don't be playing. Like, no one wants to be playing at centre half, yeah. you know what I mean? So I ended up playing at the back on a Saturday and then I kind of enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I enjoyed the, the physicality, the getting one over, some of the players that I was playing against and end up just being converted to centre off. Yeah, your um your big break though came at Brentford, right? Yeah, yeah. And um do you still like wait who do you actually support? I'm a Chelsea fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, not from that. <laughs> uh, did you watch the Munich match? I actually didn't no, I don't, I don't have BT Sports, I didn't watch it but I look, I was watching the updates and as soon as it was reading I was like that's game over, it's done yeah, for us. Oh, yeah. it's diff it's different. Absolutely different. But um yeah, so you support Chelsea, but do you still keep um, that up to date with what's going on at Brentford, or is it literally like you've left and that was? No, uh, no, I I see what they're doing this year, and um, I mean, the the way the club is is run, it's just so so different to other clubs. The way they have a B team, and you see they sort of crop players out of nowhere, turn mm. them into these stars, sell them on, and they have someone else lined up. Yeah, it's. It's mad the way the, the way they did, but it, it works for them, and it's been working for them for the last three or four years. So, yeah. um, you know, they, they they're doing something right. You know, yeah. the the amount of I, I don't know what the figures are, but the amount of players that they've sold and the money they've sold them for, it must be. I think that came out earlier in the season. There was a big thing about it where they just get a lot of money for their for their players. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you've got to look at the the players that, at the moment. You look at the history. Mm. Uh, Ben Rahama, whatever his name is, ben he's, he's I think he's like a niece, but he wouldn't even get in their team. But he's got him, got him playing championship football, star player. And he's going to be like, <laughs> money, because he's, he's good. And Ollie yeah. Watkins as well. Is. Ollie Watkins, playing down at Exeter, he was, when I played against him, you could tell he's a good player, but he's got his head down at Brentford. Mm. And I think it's always the, I mean, if you're a striker and you get picked up by Brentford, you you got to think, you know what, I, you know, I can go on to big yeah. things here. You know, they're obviously doing something right and, um, you know, it's, um, it's they, they seem to just get strikers, sell them on for 20 plus mm -hmm. million, got another one lined up, <laughs> produce him for a couple of years and that's, that's it, you know. But they, whatever they're doing now, um, it's, uh, it'd be good to see them, obviously, the, the, the last year at um, the ground at Griffin Park and mm -hmm. they're close to going up and, be good to see them in the Premiership at the new ground. I actually want them to go to the Premiership because I actually like Brentford. It's a, it's it's a, a good just, club. Yeah, it just comes across it's as a good nice club. Nice family club. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't have like massive superstars. Uh, mm. they, you know, I, when I was there, I was there for four years, and you chat to the the fans, you have mm. conversations after. You, you know, it was it was all just yeah. just a nice setting. It comes across like a good club, not like you know that Chelsea club. Um, <laughs> But I want to go back to the little comment because something happened. Little comment, it yeah. Little comment, yeah. Something happened um, when you was it, was it that match you were talking about that something happened? No, no. So it was actually training. Training. It was a, it was a training. Yeah. So where we used to train was um, by my old college, and it, it was either Tuesday or Thursday night, and um, on um, Astro Turf pitch, and you got the, uh, the floodlights and things like that. Ooh. So I remember doing like a, a, a short game, and the balls sort of come up mm. I've gone to go and head it and I've not headed it properly so I've gone for the second and I've headed it forward but after that I've sort of come down and all remember everything sort of going black and, and collapsing do you remember the whole going black yeah it's it's kind of what you see in a movie mm. uh, it's 
yeah, all I remember is sort of trying to grab onto something and then mm. sort of next thing you know, I'm waking up to all my teammates around me. So what was your first because at this point you don't know what's what's happening? No, I've not got a clue. Are you do you know that okay you passed out or do you like are you aware that something's happened but you don't know what exactly has caused it or literally just your mind is just not uh, it's just trying to you go through so many different moments. You're trying to work out what is going on, and mm. you look up to see your teammates around you. you yeah, you, you're covered. Like they, they, I remember them covering me in like jackets and things like that. Mm. I think it was a little, little bit of a drizzle, a bit of a rain, and that. So, and next thing you know, yeah, go on. Next thing you know, there's um, the ambulance coming, mm. and then I see it being carted off and. Going down to to hospital. So at what point, like how long after that did they actually tell you that um, you know what was what was what was wrong with you? Uh, what so, caused it? Sorry. Um, I think after I had a few more seizures, then that's when you you, you get looked at and cause you can't be diagnosed unless you have more than I think two or three seizures. So oh really? You have to, yeah, it's because so, some people can have like one seizure in their whole life and that's it, be done. So. Um, I think I had a few more seizures after that, and then that was when I had to go and see a neurologist, have um, scans and, and, and things like that. So that's, yeah, that obviously me being young, and mm. all I wanted to know was, you know, as long as it didn't affect my football. <laughs> yeah. All right, you know. Oh, wow. So they've obviously come and said that you, they've diagnosed you with epilepsy. Yeah. Is that something, I'm going to sound really like uneducated when I'm asking questions, but. <laughs> Is that is, epilepsy doesn't necessarily like it's not like a genetic thing, is it? No, no, no. Because uh, when talking to my neurologist, he goes, he, he that's what you can. He, that's the first thing he asks is mm. like anyone in your family has epilepsy, and I said no. Um, but then the next questions are like any accidents lately, or and two months before that, I had a motorbike accident and oh, wow. I banged my head on the curb. So yeah. he related. My uh, my epilepsy to that said that mm. something could have happened in the brain from from that accident. So that's the only thing you can pinpoint it to. Um, so that's all, what I've always gone along with. That that accident was the reason why I end up with epilepsy. So so when he told you, um, because on your on your day to day, you don't really hear much about epilepsy. You know, it's it's there, but. but the education around epilepsy isn't necessarily a big education for a lot of people unless mm. you actively go out to, to find the information about it. So did that kind of take you back and scare you or were you did you know much about epilepsy before then? I didn't know much about epilepsy. All I knew was um, what you see in like the start of um, you know, like TV programs where they say yeah. photosensitive. Yeah. That's that's all you ever, ever really see about mm. epilepsy nowadays. Um, I suppose back then, you're, you're talking about 18 years ago. So the information out there yeah. was like you'll get a leaflet from the hospital or something like that. Mm. And that's that's all you'll know. Whereas now, there's so many different resources and social media and things like mm. that that you can go out there and find what you can. But still, there needs to needs to be more on in terms of awareness for epilepsy. Yeah. No, that's that's that could be the feeling of knowing that, and then did you think that oh my foot was done, or did they tell you no you can still play? I um, well, my uh, my mum said that, that that I was recommended not to play, mm. but I, I see I hate these meetings. I, I wish now that I actually kind of paid a little bit more attention, but. It was for me. It was just like a meeting, get out, yeah, and then go and do their their life. I think, um, but yeah, I, from what she said, that um, I was told that it recommended not to play mm. because of what I had. But for the home, it's just no, nope, I'm gonna do me. I'm, you know, I live for Saturday and Sunday playing football. That's not going to change. But was it in the back of your mind? Though? It must have been. Um, no, I was quite fearless as a kid, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, honestly, fearless. I just, you know, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do, and no one was ever going to tell me that I couldn't do it. Yeah. No, that's, that's, listen, I have one seizure, 
don't ask me to do anything it's, again. But it's not the nicest feeling in the world, I'm not going to lie. Um, I've always described that, that feeling as like, you know, obviously you have a pre-season training mm. and the next day where you feel like you can't move, you know, you've done all this running. Legs are pinched. And yeah, yeah, that's what it feels like. I can, because all your, all your muscles are stimulated and overworked and mm. that's what it feels like. It, it feels like a, so a, a day of pre-season training. How long does it take you to... Okay, because now, do you still get um, as many seasons now? No, I'm quite controlled. Um, over the years, uh, it, it sort of calmed down a bit with the different medications and, mm. and I, I, I looked after myself a little bit better than I did years ago. Mm. Um, so I'd say, um, I mean, the last seizure I had was probably around about nine months ago, I think. So oh, really? Yeah, very well controlled at the moment. I read, I read somewhere that um, in your blog, because you do, you do a blog, you can plug that epilepsy book with that. But um, I read that you said they're quite nocturnal. Yes, so now, I used to, I used to have um, seizures while I was awake. So, but as, as the years have gone on, now I have them in my sleep. Mm. So um, that's why like, I'm allowed to drive at the moment because all my seizures are in my sleep. Yeah. So I could um, I could have a seizure in my sleep. I'm, I'd know the next morning that I've had one because of the the feeling. Yeah. It's not the feeling's not as bad anymore, mm. but I know um, with just how I feel and you, you feel groggy, you feel dazed. You, you get up and you just don't feel yourself. Yeah. Um, and obviously, with me being my wife, she she can always. Oh, yeah, she, I'll, she, I'll, she, I'll she knows. She she'll, she'll tell me as well. Um, it's been a few times where you know I woke up in hospital, but you know, like you you got to think, you know, you've gone to bed. Yeah. And you wake up in somewhere completely different. You don't yeah. recognize. You, it's almost like it's a dream. When was the last time that that happened where you woke up? You went to sleep and then you woke up in hospital. Um, the Tyson, first Tyson Fury fight. I stayed up and watched that. Oh, okay. So. That's Fury like versus Wilder, so that's eight, 28 2018, December. Right? Yeah, the so yeah. I I stayed up and watched that. Mm. Um, so the fight mm. must have been four or five o'clock in the morning. And mm. one of my triggers is actually um, is tiredness. I, I, was, I was going so, to ask that because in your blog you you do mention that you tried to get sleep. Yeah. And um, and I was thinking, why does that matter? But it's it's tiredness that yeah, that, that will tired, tiredness can be one of the triggers. So. Mm. Being on a Saturday night, I've played a game. I've I've gone to uh, my mother-in-law's house with the wife and everything like that, and stayed there with her. And I think I've watched like match a day, mm. so that ends at, like twelve o'clock. I'm thinking I might as well just stay up, you know. Yeah. It's <laughs> there's a fight on in a few hours. If I if I don't stay up, I'll probably sleep through it and I'll miss it. Yeah. So I've stayed up, and then watched it. And as soon as the bells end, they they done the draw or whatever I've just gone straight to sleep mm. but then I must have I don't know how long it was after I've gone to sleep I had a seizure and then whatever it was like five six o'clock in the morning got into hospital I've uh, gone to ambulance and gone to hospital and I woke up with um, and I just see I was in a, in a, in a ward and mm. my missus sort of sitting by the bed yeah you um, you, you said it can be like um like your whole body just resets like a computer. When yeah, that's that's the way that um, my neurologist always sort of try to explain to me that mm. it's almost like a virus getting to the computer and then the, the computer has to sort of shut down and reset itself. Yeah. Um, that's sort of how, how it is really. So when you're, you know when you said there was a, um, a time when they asked you a question, your date of birth I think it was, and you couldn't, <sighs> you couldn't get your date of birth up, yeah. but in your mind, is it's it? you're scrambling, you know. You know you, you can't not know your date of birth yeah. and your name and things like that. So I remember I must have been like 18, 19 when that happened, and I remember sort of being in the hospital and the the doctors asked me this question, and I was stuck. It's the cogs are going, yeah. you know, the, the wheels are in motion. I couldn't answer it, just couldn't answer it. <laughs> and, and it wasn't until sort of half an hour, hour mm. that I could fully answer the question. It but, was, but when you couldn't answer it, you knew within yourself that I should yeah, do this. Yeah, and you, you get frustrated. Mm. You 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 get frustrated that you can't 
answer the most simplest question. Yeah. But don't you think like that happened now, or are your seasons literally like? No, I've, I've not had that yet. No. Yeah. No. Um, normally, um, any questions asked, I'm sort of quick to ask straight away and mm. um, answer the question straight away. So, on that, on that part, I'm, I'm quite yeah. alright with. Yeah. Is it is it a thing of you know when you've had one during the night? Like let's say your wife, you and your wife, you're up in the morning. She does she have to ask you questions to make sure or are you at the point now where okay I've had a seizure but I'm cool. She'll she'll ask me like how I'm feeling and things like that and sometimes mm. she doesn't get a response that she wants because <laughs> sometimes you just want to be left alone right? yeah. obviously you feel like oh it's happened again mm. and you just go ah oh, just yeah leave me babe yeah, <laughs> yeah. but um yeah uh but she she's like yeah, she just keeps going. Come on, get up, get up. Like, yeah, um, just she'll try and sort of, you know, ask me a few questions. And she knows when it's been bad enough to sort of call the ambulance. Yeah. And that's, a, that's what the process is really for, really. Whether I'm, she can leave me and sort of let me rest and recover, or yeah. if it is she maybe feeling that. Maybe I'll have another one, and mm. she has to get an ambulance because you know I'm six foot four, yeah, uh, not, not the smallest. She's only five foot nine, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> so, that, must, that must be that must be right. <laughs> is, is that part of the reason why you're able to compete at the level you, you still do compete at because you know that you're probably not going to have one during a match because they've become nocturnal. Yeah, um, you know, I um, like I said, I, I look after myself mm. on and off the pitch, um, and one of the triggers is tiredness. So I make sure that um, I get a good like that sleep mm. to, to recover. Not only just for the epilepsy, but just for in football itself. You know, yeah. the season's a long season. It's nine months. Uh, you can end up playing fifty, nearly sixty games in a season because mm. of the cup matches and things like that. So how you played? How I, you played this year? Uh, I played. 35 league games and it's <laughs> long and about 6 or 7 cup games I think and we've still got 11 games to go so you must be at that point where it's like uh, listen in fact let me not even say that because you still got to <laughs> you still, you still got to go and play but um, are you conscious of the fact that you know what it's a long season do you have to watch the amount of games you play or is it literally just about your post like post match and how you prep for them yeah, I'm quite disciplined when it comes to as soon as it comes to the season, that's it for for the nine months of the whole season. I'm literally, and my wife probably hates it as well. So, I literally just sort of right focus. Yeah. You know, game by game. Um, I don't really drink. Mm. Don't really eat like bad food or anything like that. It's just basically, you know, this is a season where you know I want something to come out of it, and I do what I can off the field. Yeah. Well done it and to have a, as good a season as I can. So, mm. you know, we, we have like a, a six week break if that's when you, you get your chill time really and yeah. I was I was told by one of my old managers, you know, you get it, you get your sacrifice you, you know, you sacrifice and you, you get your rewards and yeah. the rewards come at the end of the season and that's you know, downtime and, and all that. So that's what I sort of stand by at the moment. Do you obviously married men and that but in terms of like nights out, do you just not do it? I'll have nights out, but it'll be with like my wife, um, mm. other couples, go for like a, a a dinner, and then maybe a, go to a club afterwards or something yeah. like that. And then, where it's when I was younger, it used to be four o'clock in the morning. Where yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, come on, it's half one, Miss yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, do Do football clubs actually understand? So, let's say, when Port Vale came in for you, when they actually came in for you, were you expecting it? or because you were... I um, kind of half sort of the deal out myself with... Um, so you did the deal yourself? With, it was me and uh, another agent, but I was told early at Cambridge that um, they won't be taking me on. Mm. Um, there was a budget cut and things like that, so I was told that uh, budget cut. You know, your wage must be. There was still there was still like two we two two weeks left of like the the season the last season now, and I was told look because I was asking questions 
because obviously my, my contract was up and I wanted to know where I stood really because mm. I didn't want it to leave until the last minute and then be told that and like you know going in the summer I've got no club yeah. trying to find I said I want you to get something sorted so then I can chill in the summer I don't have to um, worry about where I'm going to be next season so I um, I was told early that you know with what's going on there was new ownership they're cutting the budget and things like that so um, you're free to talk to and the like so me and, me and my wife um, her family live up north so we made decisions to like was I going to move close to my family mm -hmm. if someone's interested or we move up north close yeah. to her family and then um, there was a few sort of clubs around the area and one being Port Vale yeah. and then managed to get a, uh, a meeting in just before the end of the season mm -hmm. and agree on a deal and that was it it was done there and then when you're like going through the deals um so okay, let's say with Port Vale, in those meetings, the manager actually wanted you, right? It's not like okay, I'm gonna try and push for this move, or was it like the chairman wanted you? Or no, nah, it was it was as soon as they heard about my availability, it was like yeah, mm. it's just the type of player that we needed. But then with your obviously epilepsy, um, at what point do you have to? Is this known that you that you um, have epilepsy, or is it like medical? Well, it's. I mean, I've never. Are these silly questions, by the way? No, questions? no, no, <laughs> no. Because you know what, I was just. With that, I mean, I've been playing in the football league now for eleven years, and Ooh. still now, people are quite surprised that I, that they find out that I have ep epilepsy. But Ooh. I've spoken so many times about it. Yeah. Over the last eleven years, yeah. and still, you get players and and people in the media thinking, oh, well, I never know. And stuff. Yeah been out there for quite a while mm -hmm. and um, you know when I come into a new club you have medicals and things like that and you know they ask of any illnesses and things like that you know and, mm -hmm. and medication and, and you put oh, I put down the medication for epilepsy it's, it, I'm lucky that I've been at clubs where it's just been all right okay yeah what do you do no, you know any special mm -hmm. things you need to do and, so, and you know I, I I'd, I'll be real with you, and you know I'll be open with you if you know if I need an extra twenty four hours recovery or yeah. you know. So it's been, and they've always like been okay. If, yeah, if been absolutely fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is there like um when it comes to your initiation day, guys? We've got Leon. He's got epilepsy. So <laughs> like, how does the news filter through to the rest of the players? Um. And, and how do they deal with deal with it? I get people because um, like, it's quite because you know in football everyone kind of knows everyone. Mm -hmm. It's quite a small yeah. circle in football, and when people ask me about epilepsy, normally someone either knows someone in a family member or someone that knows it's all, you, someone always knows someone that mm. has, has got epilepsy or something like that. So they're normally quite intrigued and curious to know like oh so how does it come across and they, they, they're just asking questions really mm. and um, yeah um, yeah they'll always just sort of ask and want to know a little bit more mm. what's the support like in clubs for um... okay let me get it epilepsy I don't see it as I might be wrong I don't see it as a disability do you know what I mean I see it as more of a condition but is it actually classified it's as classed as a disability? Mm. But then, with epilepsy, it is so broad. Every single case is different. Mm. So, um, you you could have someone that like me who doesn't have seizures as often as someone that has someone that could have ten, twenty a day. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Every every. Yeah, every um, case is so so different. It's mm. it's hard to um, it's hard when you go like the diagnosis and all that. It's so just very complex. It's mm. it's one of those um, subjects that is it must be hard for people in um, like you know in the NHS and things like that to sort of control and, and things like that because it, you're coming across something different every time mm. with someone with epilepsy. You're 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 very vocal about epilepsy, and like I said, you have them. Um, a blog, epilepsy footballer. 
Epilepsy, epilepsy baller. Epilepsy baller. Yeah. Everyone get following. Um, but have you always been vocal or, you know, like just taking control of it? Or was it something that, that you maybe kept, not under wraps, but people around you would know, but just didn't really... The way it, the way it come across at first, it was kind of an accident. Mm. Um, I was being interviewed by um, Evening Standard. Yeah. And I was at Brentford. And um, the original story was basically about, because I used to work in uh, a care home with adults with learning disabilities. Yeah. And one of the guys there and had epilepsy. So as he's asking me questions, he, he basically said that, I, I just basically said that I, 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 with with that job, I could relate to one of the um, one of the, the, the people who were there mm. who had epilepsy, so I, I knew what he was going through. Yeah. And then the interviewer basically said, "Hold on a minute, you let me just talk about your epilepsy then." Yeah. And the story changed from that working with adult learned disabilities to, to me yeah. having epilepsy and being able to play football, mm. and then. The next day, uh, it was in there. I had epilepsy charities all sort of coming to coming to me and talking to me, and in the end, up, I ended up being the ambassador for Young Epilepsy. Yeah. And then since that day, I just sort of helped them, trying to raise more awareness. Uh, they done um, award ceremonies each year mm -hmm. uh, around Purple Day, which is March twenty sixth. So go there. Uh, give out awards, they used to get celebs in and things like that um, and been their ambassador for the sort of last 10 years and as as I'm in the position that I'm in yeah. I feel that I could should do more and help with awareness and that's where this vlog's come about really How long has the vlog been going for now? Six weeks Is that it? It's only been six weeks, yeah and I've had you so many up. people you banged up a good couple of posts Yeah, see originally it was only meant to be um I was thought, I'll, I'll do one every other week. Mm. But then a subject sort of comes to my head and then it just, I'll just write it out. Yeah. And because I've, I've got my phone or my computer, so if I'm by my computer and something comes to me, I start writing it out, put it out there, bang, out on social media and then start plugging it away. And yeah. then um, it's just out there. Do you find it that almost like therapeutic? Very. And... Um, so I've, I've thought about doing a blog before about six months ago but then I didn't know what to sort of write it on mm. and then when epilepsy there was a, some, I see someone um, talking about epilepsy on Twitter and I thought you know what I'm just going to talk about myself just, mm. just going to get it out there it might whether it's successful or just see what happens see, yeah. see where it goes really and I didn't think that so many people would. I, I thought I was gonna get like twenty views or something yeah. today, and then I think the first was something like one hundred and fifty views or something yeah. like. That. Yeah. Do you know what day. it is though? It's because even when when you put it out, like, I'll read it, and it's it's interesting because no disrespect, but if a, if your average Joe wrote a blog about um, epilepsy, you probably wouldn't read it, and that's that's just. To be when it ends up, but because you're who you are in regards to being a footballer, yeah, and you suffer from epilepsy, it's like, oh, you know what I mean? So, a lot of people have it's that it's that connection to a footballer with it, so it yeah. adds to the whole because a lot of people don't know about epilepsy, yeah. So, to, to now talk to a footballer who's, who's got it and see how he's living his life, and they, they actually see that you live a really normal life as well, yeah. I think the way, um. Footballers are viewed, you know, drive these big flash cars, and mm. you know, it's it's all what is portrayed in in the media. Whereas a lot of, you know, especially in Premiership, a lot of Premiership players can't. They don't. They're not into all that. They're not into. Mm. You know, you don't got to look at like. Just for, I'm just for. I'm going to bring out Kante. Yeah. He drives like a little mini and yeah. just keeps himself to himself. Not into, <laughs> you know, big flash cars. Yeah, mm. he, he makes a lot of money, but he doesn't. You don't see him out and about in showing off his wealth and all that and there's no need for it and a lot of, a, a lot of players are like that they just you know they, they, they want to live a that. normal life as possible yeah. really I've, I've always said that um, that the perception of footballers is one where it's just like 
it's it's all media driven though, isn't it? You know, it's you know, you only have got to look at the whole thing with like Pogba. He can't mm. even walk about and do anything mm. because they just on him. And it used to be Balotelli. Yeah. Balotelli, the amount of stupid stories you hear, and I'd probably say about eighty percent of them were lies. Of course, <laughs> but, well, but because he was a little bit <laughs> mad. Mm. You could literally make up anything, and because it was him, you could thought, yeah, there, there could be some truth in that. Mm. But, yeah. what's, what's, what's been like the biggest misconception you, you think that there have been of, of footballers, let's say? Um, that's a hard one, that. Because I, I think a lot of people, they judge you by your occupation rather than who you are. Yeah, definitely. Um, they see. I suppose the general public just see them, ah, oh, they're just footballers, you know, yes. all they do is go and kick a ball about for a couple of hours, go on. Get paid ridiculous about that. Yeah, money. they got the best life, but, and I think they, I think a lot of people think because of this big life and big, um, big occupation they have that it comes without any struggles. Mm. And, but, you know, anything you do, it comes with that, with, a certain type of struggle and stress, mm. you know, um, and I think that's why, you know, the whole mental health thing at the moment, you know, that, that's going on uh, within football, it's, it's big, not just football, it's a, a lot of sports at the moment as well. Mm. Yeah, with, with mental health, funny enough, I was going to touch on that, um, how does, maybe not now, even now, to be honest, how does having epilepsy, uh, what, what effect does it have on your mental health? I used to get down. I'm not gonna lie. I used to get down when I was younger. Um, it used to, that I used to just sort of look at it and thinking, ah, oh, you know, here we go again. But then it would, I just spin it, I suppose. Um, I think you know what? If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. But just you know, carry on. Just mm. yeah. I think I just sort of took myself into just going, just going, just going mm. to live a, a normal life as possible and. Get on with it, yeah. Rather than sort of mulling over it, and because once it's done, there's nothing else you can really do. It's mm. what's done is done. Yeah. So you, you have to sort of carry on, mm. no matter what, really. Are you, and that was sort of my my thing. Yeah. Are, are you someone that um, would so would try to reach out and find people who also suffer from epilepsy, or are you just sort to be like, this is what I have. I'm still gonna live a normal life, and you know, so long as I'm surrounded by my family. Or do you try to actively just go out and reach out to people? Uh, me, no, I was I was normally quite um, closed growing mm. up. I sort of kept a lot of things to myself and yeah, so but obviously, you know, uh, now being married and things like that, quite open with my wife and, and whatever, so, uh, but growing up I was, it was, yeah, I'd sort of dealt with everything on yeah. my own that sort of thing. I wouldn't really open up to too many people. I spoke mm. to a, a few a few friends. Um but yeah, but now it's, it's a lot different. I'm like as you can see from the blog, I'm quite open in what I say about mm. my epilepsy and I try and get out there as much as possible. Is that the route you're gonna go I'm not saying football's gonna be finished with you anytime soon, but one day when football's over, are you looking to stay in football or are you looking to Go down the route of um, I was looking. Awareness. I'm looking. I was looking into um, staying in football. I still want to do that, but um, with the whole epilepsy awareness at the moment, it's a route that while I'm in football, I want to yeah. take advantage of that mm. and um, yeah, just keep plugging this while I'm. So I, I can still do this along with things like coaching and things like that. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't see why I can take both on really. It must be a dream for like, these charities um, who are trying to raise awareness to have a footballer to come out and just talk about it. Like, they, you must be an absolute dream. They must be approaching you left, right, and <laughs> Yeah, not, not just that. I mean, I get, um, I've had a lot of like, dads and mums um, saying about their kids. And mm. I even had, not long ago, a young lad, um, he was going for the sort of same thing. He's a, 14 year old so he's like an under 15 at academy and um, he's he, he was having a bit of a bad time but ra luckily enough really um, it was around about the time we were playing Man City and he was a bit down with what was going on with his football and the seizures that he was having 
but then his dad uh, showed him the the article. I think it was the Sun or something like that uh, about my epilepsy and that. And then he said he his son watched the Man City game and couldn't take his eyes off it. It's, and the fact that he knew that I was playing and mm. uh, little me in in the yeah, Etihad playing against Aguero having epilepsy. He said what it sort of gave him a new lease of life really yeah. and that love back for football. But did you ever think that you'd be this guy that people look up to and, and get strength from? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. It's, it's like I say, it's come by accident. Yeah. It, it's kind of come by accident because I don't think if I hadn't had the um, if I hadn't had the actual interview in the first place mm. I don't think I would have said too much about it. I would have just got on. Oh, I've got epilepsy, that's it. Yeah. I wouldn't have... Because I don't think I would have really looked into seeing that epilepsy needed that much awareness. So, mm. you know, I knew what I needed to do. But that was it. So yeah. I sort of looked after myself. But then when talking to the charities and things like that, and they they seen, they gave me all the stats and, and things like that. And I think, oh, man, I, I need to help here. Yeah. Like I say, so if, if if I hadn't had that interview in the first place, I probably wouldn't be in uh, the position I am today with with trying to help about awareness. Yeah, and um, just to touch on, because I don't think we actually um, finished it, I probably would have interrupted you more this, but um, your teammates, so was it at Accrington? Yeah, at yeah, Accrington. yeah, yeah. So um, when you had a seizure? So it was a Tuesday night game, and... Um, we was we had a meeting place at one of the hotels and um, go there for pre match and things like that. But we had a few hours, so we would have rooms if we went to some players like have a like kip and things like that because it was a long journey from Cambridge up to Akron. So I decided to have a bit of a rest and chill out for a couple of hours, and then uh, my roommate um, basically went and got the physio and my manager and all that because I'd had a seizure and sleep mm. and um, I woke up and um, yeah a bit dazed and whatever and I think it must have been about sort of three hours mm. kick off time and whatever and um, talked to my manager he said look you know, no, 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 I can't I can't play you yeah you just had a seizure you know I said nah don't don't worry about that you know I'll feel fine yeah I feel fine no, let me play let me play and he's like I can't do it. I mm. can't, just can't do it. And then I conceded to said, oh, "Okay, right, fair enough." But luckily, the the, the game got cancelled because it must have been like lashing it down in rain that mm. that day. So um, it was cancelled. And in the end, I got got on the bus, went home, and was given a couple of days mm. rest and recuperate. And I was back in training a few days later. You go and training and. All, all your teammates and manager and physio like they're all cool and yeah like just you, you ask it, you get the usual you know how you're feeling and mm. all that you know I'm fine yeah. you know I'm just, when we're training <laughs> you think yeah people's um, and this is really like a, a selfish thing for like for certain people but do you think if you weren't so good at what you do the support for you wouldn't be the way it was like if you weren't such a good defender um, oh, I've got such a funny thing to show you actually. Yeah, go I hope not. Uh, I hope that any player that has epilepsy, whether good or bad, that you get the support from the supporters. Mm. Um, you know, it, to to play with so, any condition, I suppose, is it, you know, it's one little obstacle you got to mm. you got you got to hurdle over. So um, no, I I hope that any. Like I say, any good or bad, that they, they had the support from the people around them. Okay, excellent. Because I was talking about um, you being a good a good player. What would you say your, your playing style is? <laughs> I was looking at the wiki. Hey. I was looking at the wiki and here it is. I, I, I think no nonsense normally gets sort of thrown out there as a description. <laughs> Leg has been described as a commanding centre half. Yeah, I'll take that. And, and this is it. No lacking in pace. Hey, no. <laughs> my pace is actually quite good. You know? right, I used to be a sprinter when I was younger. <laughs> hey, my sprinting is not actually that bad. No lacking in pace. He has strong strength, positioning, and tackling skills. And this is the bit. 
he can also achieve great distances on his long throws. <laughs> that's oh, yeah, play. I used to say long throws. Yeah. That, that's your playing style, but, apparently. Hey, you don't. The funny thing is, as a defender, you don't have to be quick. Speak on, speak on. What do you mean? You don't have to be good. You don't have to be quick. You don't have to be quick to be. Just be able to read the game. Then. If you read the game well enough, I mean, John Jerry wasn't quick. Kind of viral wasn't quick. Maldini wasn't quick. Mm. They were, you know, they read the game that well that, you know, the ball was gonna go into a channel and that. They're there before the, the ball's even dropped. Which defenders do you like? Well, you said you was a midfielder, so growing up, you didn't. You probably didn't like look to so defenders for inspiration. In a, so where I used to live, it was like a. It's not so much now, but it was predominantly that like sort of a, a white area. So. But when it came to football, I used to look at, being a midfielder, I used to look at all the sort of kind of black midfielders that were playing in the Premiership mm. time. So I used to see Paul Lintz. Yeah. You know, I used to see him, you know, when he's in the tunnel and he's got his shirt off. Yeah. I've done that one time. <laughs> I must have been about 13 years old or something. <laughs> skinny copy, body. Yeah, skinny body. And like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. As I was a Chelsea fan as well, I looked at players like Eddie Newton. Uh, yeah, blast from the past. Um, who else was there? But then, as uh, when Rude Hullet first came into Chelsea, mm. that was my guy there. I just I, I got dreads because of him. Honestly, I got dreadlocks what because of Rude Hullet. I got about dreadlocks about? because of Rude Hullet, and every time he would come on match a day, just just yeah, I'd smile. Think, yeah, that's favorite player there and then. So, so in, when you had to go to like be a defender, was there someone you kind of modelled your game on, or were you just like, just to um, see how it goes? Bro? I used to look at because I was passionate about like England growing up. Like, I used to watch a lot of England games. I used mm. to see Sol Campbell. Oh, I know what. That's and great segue. Yeah, I used to think, yeah, that's it. If, if I want to make it as a defender, like be like that. Mm. And then, and then I'd watch like Marcel Desailly yeah. oh, at Chelsea. Yeah, listen, Even John Terry. Um, yeah, but Master Desai and Leboeuf at the back. I was just about to say, Leboeuf, yeah, yeah. you got your Chelsea goggles on, right? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have to, you have to have it on, you know. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's too funny, but the reason why I said it's, it's a great segue, because England, obviously you, prob you probably would have liked to play for England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you also, um, you, you qualified to play for St Lucia. Uh, no, well, there was something about it. So, um, I, I didn't meet my uh, other half of my family till like I was like thirty odd. Mm. So, um, but well, early yeah, early early twenties, like twenty eight, I think it was. I met my uh, other sister, and she said to me um, that uh, she because she didn't know too much about that like, some of the aunties and uncles mm. and things like that. So um, cause it was quite split yeah. when, when the a lot of them come into the country and that. So um, she said, "Oh, well, I think because uh, I asked the question, so I wanted to know like parts of my background and that." So mm. I, was, I said, "Oh, where's where's like dad and uh, granddad and all that?" Did where you not know before that? No, no, no. I had little information. So um, she said, "Oh, I, I think um, at Jamaica and I think uh, somewhere in there there's St. Lucia." Mm. So, oh, okay. And when I spoke to someone about St. Lucia. Uh, Ever since then, I was getting um, the effort, the, the solution FA, like saying, if you can <laughs> get, so if you can get the documents, yeah, you can come represent them. I was thinking, oh, this is gonna be hard. This I've got to go back to try and find everyone, try and get. And in the end, um, it was mm. that the, 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 I still, from this day, don't really know too much about. I know some, but not too yeah. much. But uh, it's predominantly Jamaica and things like that. So. Um, I've recently done an ancestry test as well yeah. with my wife because she's kind of in the same um, boat as me with some further parts of the, yeah. the family and that. And I find out I've got so many different like origins in, in me. Do you believe in those ancest in, in an ancestry tests? Uh, I just think it doesn't work. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I'd say so. I mm. mean, so, the amount of things you can do now with science mm. and things like that. I think so, yeah. Would you, but you want to, you would play for St. Lucia? If, if, if I found all documentation and things like that, no, uh, I would, I would, I would go and 
Yeah, playing international football. I think growing up, I used to watch international football. I think and just, just imagine, you know, you know, and you're lining up and you have got the national anthem and mm. things like that. It's 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 the passion of football yeah. and yeah, I think um, just to represent your country, be, yeah. you know, an honour and achievement. So yeah, yeah, no, there's, there's got to be a win. We have to find <laughs> has, hashtag find the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, okay, cool. So um, I didn't actually, because I wanted to ask, that uh, obviously you didn't play for England, but if you would have actually liked to play for Stanley Shaw. I, kn- I know at the time when... Um, How long ago was that, do you know? Uh, that's gone about seven years ago, I think it was. So it was about six, seven years ago when all that was going about, and then the the, the, the Twitter account of um, Solution FA, they were saying like, possible players that could represent, and they were bringing up people like Anton Ferdinand, mm. um, I've got a couple of strikers and I was thinking no, if we could get this together it could be a good team no, because, <laughs> because, because, because things, things like that um, when you when you look at the players that can actually play for some of these home countries if you manage to get them all together it instantly just improves the quality of that, that straight away and yeah. we're not talking about substandard players like you just mentioned Anton Ferdinand yeah. you get me you got yourself there so that's that's two centre halves there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, two, two, two <laughs> one of them apparently doesn't have to be that good. So one of them got low pace. You got the long throws. Yeah, I chuck it in there. I hope he got a decent target, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's it? What's it like with um, with Pope as a target man? He's like, he's difficult. He can be difficult. Um, he does the easy things uh, very well. Like he's he just puts himself about. Make doesn't make it easier for you to jump and win your header. Mm. It just, just gets about you yeah, and just uses his body very yeah. well. Who's been the, like, the most difficult striker you've come up against this this season? I, uh, do you know what? I, I've got to ask this question now. I can't think, you know. I mean, I've got, I've got to say no, Aguero. No, no, in no, our no, league. In, in, in the Aguero, league, league. definitely. <laughs> it, but in our league, <sighs> lad Grimsby, James Hansen, he's good in the air. I mean, he's got the most heads in, in, in the league. Um, so he's like... I've had a few battles with him over the years, mm. so it's normally a decent test for him. So he's not too bad, to be fair. He's a bit like Popey in a sense, like yeah. a big target man, and knows how to use his body well. Um, then you've got like, like Owen Doyle, who's at Swindon, oh, yeah, scored a lot of goals. Know, yeah. But then he come up against me and Smith. We played him here, we beat him, and he didn't have a sniff, so. In the pocket. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I let him out in the end. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's excellent, man. But um, this has been... Actually, no, bef- before we do wrap up, I did want to touch on... Um, because we are going to get a few Port Vale fans. In fact, yeah, let me, let me touch on it. They're quite interactive with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I talk to um, some of the fans. I, I like to get involved with fans. I, I don't think it's a bad thing because I think it's so... It's, think good. It's, it's good. I think it's where I've come from non-league because... Mm. You know, you in non league, you you play a game of ninety minutes, mm. you go in a bar, you get your pay packet, you have a drink, the supporters mm. are around, yeah. They'll come up to you, good game and all that. You talk about a few things that maybe happen in the game. So you you stick around, don't you? Yeah. And you, you chat to everyone who's watched the game. And then you get off and that's done and then it's the same next week. Mm. Whereas in in professional game you don't really have yeah. that interaction with fans and I've always been you know quite cool with fans wherever I've been so when you got social media and you know they I got quite a few followers and look a few things come up and you know it might be something jokey or anything and I'll sort of always respond and, yeah. and give my thoughts no, I, so. I do think that's very important because it provides that that human that yeah. human I think they, they just want to know you know what what you like really they, exactly. they they're not you do get some people that abuse social media and just want to use it to to just have a go at you and mm. be quite negative. But I don't focus on them. Yeah. You know, if they want to do that, that's fine. You won't get a a, a mention from me. But whereas the a lot of the fans that I speak to are very positive, and I I speak to them a lot. Yeah, because I was I was gonna say it it would probably help during times like last season when it wasn't going too well. Yeah, you just have to, that's what you've got to take it. Like I said earlier, you know, it comes with, it's, football, maybe, you know, people might see it's just 
being football, but it, it comes with completely different stresses that you do maybe in a office work. Yeah. If you're fighting for re relegation, you're not going to be, um, oh, well, I'm a footballer, um, I, I'm living my life and all that. You're going to be, you still, if you care enough, you'll still be taking it on and thinking, oh, I've got to put it right next mm. week. So if you've had a loss on a weekend, you'll take that to the next week and do whatever you can to put that right the following week and no it, it's still a job yeah it, it it's you know it's it, it's a hobby for me that turned into a job and mm. um, I enjoy it and I keep that way how much of it though that sometimes so as I mentioned last last season very quickly when it wasn't going too well and there was a protest or whatever and and you obviously have a certain amount of levels to what's actually happening without actually putting it out there. How how hard is it to not get on social media and actually when you see certain things coming out of the team to be like, actually, this is what the truth really is? I've been guilty of before when I was a little bit younger, I suppose, so I've been now a bit more mature, so I won't get sucked into all that. But um, I've been guilty before in uh, sort of responding and, and it, it, you want to say you want to touch on points and say things because you get you'll get like people saying ah oh, this player's crap or this player and then you get people just hammering you mm. and you want to set you do you want to set the record straight mm. and then all of a sudden they turn on you yeah <laughs> and sometimes it is just best to let it all sort of cool that cool off a little bit give it mm. 24 hours and then you can respond because i think you know fans are are passionate they just want to see their team do well yeah and with uh with some fans you know you, you could have a drink and things like that and mm. you might regret some of the things they say yeah. the next day so you, you do have to sort of let it blow over yeah and maybe if you're going to speak to them speak to them when everything's sort of calmed down otherwise you're sort of throwing fuel onto the fire yeah. in, in some Ask in some case away. yeah okay cool well um Thank you very much for talking to us today. I know you've got a busy schedule, so I'm happy that I've got this in the diary. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed. And I hope you've had fun, though, talking. I've had, I've had fun, yeah. It's uh, been good talking about the blog and football and epilepsy and all that. My belly's it's, it's good. <laughs> it's hungry. That is <laughs> He's always funny. My belly started again as soon as that door opened and I knew that there was going to be food there. But, um, yeah, do you want to quickly plug your... Um, so yeah, um, so my uh, blog. blog is Epilepsy Baller. I've got a separate uh, a, a Twitter account, uh, Epilepsy Baller, where I post all my posts and that. And soon uh, I will have uh, actual YouTube account, which I'll be, be blogging as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so in the next week or so, I'll be having that. Uh, I'll be posting that on my Twitter account and my Epilepsy Baller Twitter account. Yeah. And um, yeah. I suppose that's that really, yeah. Okay. yeah. We'll put everything in the bio anyway yeah. and all the all the links there. Um guys, 99th episode with Leon Leg or Leon Leggy. Leg, Leg, <laughs> Leg, no, Leon Leg. Um hope you've enjoyed it. Keep liking, subscribing, sharing, hashtag counter attack podcast. Can we quickly use the camera to see out there on the pitch so they can actually see how good it is? Yes, go on, look at that.